So um, everyone here remembers this conical pendulum setup that I've been using so far for circular motion? Yes, seems familiar enough. Okay, so let me uh, describe the setup now. So this would be worksheet five, problem seven. So um, imagine that I have some string that's attached. So you know, in the actual demo, it's my hand. But imagine that's a ceiling, and it's attached to a ball, which is going uh, undergoing a circular motion. So, um, so. Yeah, it's undergoing circular motion. Let me actually measure the length this time and see how long it is. So the length of the string that we are using, it's about 50 centimeters, right? So I'm going to be actually plugging in numbers this time. So I'll say the length of the string is about 50 centimeters or 0 0.5 meters. Um, and let's say we are, uh, let me see what feels natural to me. Um, so this is normally what feels natural to me. Uh, how big of an angle do you think this is making with the vertical? Like 30 degrees, roughly? Maybe, yeah, okay. It, this is, these are rough numbers. So it's uh, making a, a circular path so that the string makes the angle of theta, which will later plug in 30 degrees, as it makes this uh, circular path. So here's the question that the question asks. What is the period of the pendulum? As in, if you are, everyone here knows the term period? Yes, okay. Yeah, actually, uh, we are going to spend a little more, bit more time with the circular motion or rotation terminology later. But let me write down a few so that uh, I'm not losing people as I'm talking, using these terms. So let me call this uh, rotation terms. Uh, we are going to come back to this when we do rigid body rotation. So um, I want to just mention this for now so that I'm not losing people now. So when we talk about rotation, there's a cycle, period, frequency. Um, and let me end with the one last term, which is uh, goes by two different terms, sometimes they are synonymous, sometimes not. Angular uh, frequency, or sometimes angular uh, velocity. So I think these are the most common terms that everyone should know when we are talking about circular motion or rotation. Everyone knows what a cycle is? Well, we can measure the angle in a cycle, but I mean as a cycle, as a thing, like, you know, if I said, yeah, one time around the circle, right? Yeah, that's it. Okay, so I'm not going to define cycle because it seems like everyone knows what a cycle is. But you do have to know that for the rest of the description. Um, so the period, the way you would define it is, I'm not going to give you formulas. I'm going to give you descriptions. Period is the time for one cycle. Right? And you know, you can come up with the formulas which would be formula for period. Uh, what, what do you think of frequency is? So how often? Yeah, so with the frequency, what we are going to be measuring is number of cycles. So number of cycles, um, let's make it easy for ourselves, say divide by one second. So it's number of cycles per some amount of time. Good. Um, and if you want to know the units, frequency is measured in hertz. But we'll come back to that later. Um, now, angular frequency, I think it's easier to define this in terms of angular frequency. So when you look at frequency, uh, the unit of frequency is a number of cycles per time, right? So frequency is measured in terms of cycles. It turns out for um, mathematical reasons, um, Often, if you are using frequency or period in your formulas, very often you will end up writing down 2 pi. Like that might be the formula that Ranjit was remembering. The 2 pi comes in often for some reason. And in order to reduce the number of 2 pi's you are writing down, one of the things you can do is express those formulas in terms of something called the angular frequency, usually denoted with the letter omega. I'll talk about that later. So with the angular frequency, what you're doing is you're measuring the same thing as frequency 
except that you are converting from quote unquote units of cycles to units of radian. The reason I'm doing this quote, scare quotes is neither of them are actually units. Cycle is not a unit, radian is not a unit. They're both just the numbers. But we are saying instead of counting cycles, we are going to count radians. So with angular frequency, it would be number of radians, radians per second. And uh, let me write out radians better. Radians per second. And you know what? I'll come up with a formula for this later. As I said, we're going to come back to this later in the semester to use it more fully. For now, I just want you to introduce the term so that I'm not losing people if I'm using any of those words. OK, so one period. Now, everyone knows what a period is. That's the amount of time it would take for this to ball to go around and come back. That would be one period. And the question is, what is, what is the, the period of this thing? Okay. All right. Um, where do we start? So we are given, we are not given much. We are essentially given geometric parameters. Length of the string, angle that it's making as it's going in a circle. And we are asked for period. Any ideas where we would start? So Randy says graph, because you feel like gravity is playing a role here, right? All right, so if you're thinking about gravity, what type of problem are we looking at? Force, we are looking at a force problem. That's where I want to start. That whatever, um, so you know, here the connection from beginning to the end is not immediately obvious to most people. But the very first place that you can start out with is that whatever you are doing, it'll involve forces. It'll involve analyzing forces. Once you realize that, where do you start? You start out with a standard strategy, which starts out with a free body diagram. So I'm going to start out free body, with a free body diagram. I don't know exactly where I'm going with it, but I'll just start there and hope that once I have enough things written down, it'll become clearer. So feel, I'm drawing free body diagram of the ball. And here's one thing you always have to do with the circular motion. Because the things are always moving around, you have to pick a snapshot. You have to pick a moment in time to draw the forces for. So I'm just going to pick this snapshot. No, for no other good reason than I like this side better than this side. <laughs> but you could do it for this side. It, uh, in the end, it shouldn't matter. I'm going to use this snapshot to help me analyze the forces. So Ranji said this earlier. So there's going to be gravity. Any other forces? Uh, did I hear friction? Tension, tension, okay, okay. Yeah, tension that's going along the direction of the string. Tension, okay. Any other forces? No, oh yeah, I guess we looked at this before. So does this look like a complete free body diagram? Yeah, this is a free body diagram that's uh, indicating acceleration to the left, maybe. Do you expect left toward acceleration? From what? The yeah, towards the center, yeah. Stephen, is that what you're, you're gonna say? Yeah. So you do expect acceleration towards the center. So if I'm drawing a snapshot for this point here, I do expect a left toward acceleration. So all right, so all of this seems good. So all right, what's the next step? We have free body diagram, that's step number one. Step number two. Axis. Define coordinate axis. So all right, I'm going to do it along the direction of acceleration. So let me define it this way. Positive x is going to left, y pointing up. All right, then I need to break forces down into components along this axis. So gravity is fine, I don't need to do anything. The tension needs to be broken into x and y component. Uh, once I draw the y component, I see the angle that I have drawn before, so let me just draw it there. I don't need to go through complicated geometry exercise. So the y component will be t cosine theta, x component will be t sine theta. Good. OK, so now I'm ready to write down Newton's second law equations. That's my step number four. So I write down two equations, one for the x direction, one for the y. So net force in the x direction and the y direction. In the x direction, there's only one force, t sine theta. So in the positive direction, the way I defined it. T sine theta is equal to mass times acceleration. 
um, y direction, t cosine theta is minus mg, t cosine theta minus mg is equal to, what is it equal to? Wait, wait. So it would be normally equal to mass times acceleration in the y and x direction. But what's the acceleration in the y direction? Zero by design. So I'm used to just writing it down as zero instead of going through all those complicated symbols. Good. So as I keep pointing this out every single time I do this, this is the end of standard strategy. And here, um, you will see that I don't seem any closer to the answer that I'm looking for. So the answer that I'm looking for is the period. Is period any part of my expressions here? No, so nothing here directly relates to period. So I need to go one step further. Any idea what that one step further is, Stephen? Uh, acceleration. Centripetal acceleration. Yeah, you have a formula for that, right? Yeah, so this is uh, the other thing to remember in circular motion. Not only you expect there to be acceleration, you actually know what that's going to be. You know that acceleration will be v squared over r, where r is the radius of the circle. So you might as well reflect that in your equations. That will help you see um, where, you go get, where you go from the equations you have to the answer you want. So say this is equal to m v squared over r. And I will have to rewrite r in terms of given quantities later, given geometric quantities later. All right. Uh, so any idea how we might be able to use these to relate to the period? OK, Abdi, how? Uh, we have a radius over there. OK. So let's say I have radius, and I have some sort of velocity. How can you use those to figure out the period? OK, I know the circumference. I know circumference, or the distance, is equal to 2 pi r. And that will be important in knowing the period. Then we can find the time from the, from the velocity. Yeah, so I know the distance. I know the velocity. So this is time. The time tr taken is, uh, let's see, distance divided by speed, right? Yeah, so remembering this, then period must be, this must be equal to distance, 2 pi r, divided by speed, v. Yep. So um, let's put it this way. I feel like my goal here should be to find the velocity v. Because once I find the velocity v, then I can calculate period easily enough. So, so okay. So that's my goal. So, so you know, the, the, here the standard strategy doesn't take you as far as it did in past the problems. Here there are these additional dots that you need to connect on your own can, before you can proceed. So, but once you've done all that, then all right. Then my goal is to find the speed here that's consistent with everything that's written down here. Then I'm back to the, my regular problem solving mode. I have one, two equations. So the question is, do I have two, only two unknowns? V is one of the unknowns. Any other unknowns? T is an unknown, OK. Is theta known? Yeah. Given, right? Now, R, it's technically not given straight, but you can figure out R. Let me actually do that now. So in this triangle here, I'm given L and theta, right? So I can express this r as L sine theta. Yeah. And once I do that, then r is known. So I might as well just to replace this r with L sine theta now so I don't confuse myself later. Good. OK, so, um, any, so t is, once again, uh, yeah, no other unknowns. So I have two equations, two unknowns. I should be able to solve for it. Yeah. So I would solve the second equation for t, plug it into the first equation to get rid of it. Then I can solve for v exclusively. Okay, let's do that. It shouldn't take that long. 
So solve the second equation for t. t is equal to mg over cosine theta. I'm not making that mistake again. <laughs> Plug this into equation one, then you get mg sine theta over cosine theta. I feel like I've done this before, but let me go. Sine theta over cosine theta, tangent theta is equal to mass times that mv squared over L sine theta. All right, masses cancel. Let me get rid of it. Then I can solve for v here, move L sine, uh, move L sine theta over. I get v is equal to square root of gl tangent theta sine theta. Good. Now I'm not actually done. Once I have v, then what I, I have what I need to calculate period. So let me do that. Um, period, according to the formula I've written down before, is equal to 2 pi r, or L sine theta, 2 pi times L sine theta, divided by all of that. Square root of GL tangent theta sine theta. Let me simplify this a little bit before we start plugging in numbers. Uh, I'm going to look at the sine theta as a square root of sine squared theta, so that I can cancel out one factor of sine theta from here. Um, oh, I think I can actually cancel out more. This tangent theta here, what it is is sine theta over cosine theta. So I can cancel this sine theta with the remaining sine theta. Mm. I'm going to look at this L as also, you know, writing it out, it's uh, equal to L squared square rooted. So I can cancel out one factor of L from here. Mm. All right, that seems enough. Let me write down a cleaned up version of this. So it's uh, two pi times square root of L over G, square root of L over G times, uh, it's one over and then one over, so times the square root of cosine theta. Everyone okay with this as the final expression for period? So are you okay with all the cancellations here? Square, square, square root sine, and then that's how you cancel. Yeah, L and sine theta, I express it as square rooted, L squared times sine squared theta. Yeah, once you're okay with all the cancellations here, then this is what, that's just a cleaned up version, good. So I want to actually calculate the numbers. So this time, you know, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, try to make this go in a circle the way we were describing, you know, about 30 degree angle. And I will have you guys measure the period and see if it matches with our prediction. So let me finish this prediction here. Um, I'm just going to plug in rough numbers because it's not going to be better than 20% or so. 2 pi within 20% is 6, right? 2 times pi is 3. So 6 times square root of L was um, 0 0.5, so 0 0.5 meters, divided by G within 20%, 10 meters per second squared. And hopefully you are seeing that the units work out because the meters cancel, second goes to numerator, and you're square rooting it, so all the units work out. And cosine of theta, ooh, I happened to look up what cosine of 30 degree was before. It was 0 0.85 or something, right? And when you square root, it's going to be like 0 0.9 something. So I'm going to say this square root of cosine of 30 degrees is approximately one within my precision. Yeah. So let me finish this number, 0 0.5 divided by 10. I don't know what that is, uh, 0 0.05. Uh, let me write it this way. Um, six times square root of, uh, so that's a five times 10 to minus two seconds. Oh, I think I can do this. 10 to minus two, that's about you know 10. So when I do the square root, this will be about two times 10 to minus one within 20%. Because you know, two squared is 
four, which is close enough to five. Everyone good? Yeah. All right, so two times six, so it should be about 1.2 seconds. That's my prediction for what the period should be. Let's see if it is. So what I'm going to ask you to do is, because you guys can see the clock, either that or this better, I'm going to you know, do this, um, and we'll try to count it for 10 cycles, and then divide it by 10. Good. Um, so I'll tell you to start, and then when it stops, someone tell me what, how many seconds it was. So let me get it started. Ready, set, start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How many seconds? Fourteen seconds? Thirteen seconds? So 13.5 seconds. Um, so the actual experimental value was uh, 13.5, or you know, divided by 10, 1.35 seconds. It's uh, within 20%. That was my goal, and it's within 20%. Good, yeah, so it works. 